my name is Benjamin Lee. I'm the game director for Gwent at CD Projekt Red. Why the decision to uh, go standalone with Gwent? You covered it in the presentation a bit earlier, but um, what's the full story behind it? I mean, it's quite, it is kind of what we said in the presentation, but we had thousands of emails from fans, we had dozens of e uh, messages on Twitter, Facebook, and basically every social media platform we've had uh, tons of people asking us to make Gwent. And for us as well, you know, two of the guys working on the project were the original kind of creators of Gwent as well. So for them it's a passion project, and for me as well, I, I love the game and it's really something I'm super interested in. I like card games as well, so it's, you know, for, for us and for our fans, it's just a project which makes a lot of sense. And, we want to make it happen. What were the biggest challenges then when you came to kind of pulling apart what is essentially a mini game in a much bigger game and kind of fleshing it out? So I think it comes down to game balance and the amount of mechanics. So Gwent in The Witcher 3 was uh, you know, meant to be something that you progress through. You know, when you're playing, you basically start off with quite, you know, quite a basic deck and you get more and more cards as you go throughout it. And they obviously get better. And it's designed in a very RPG-like way where you, know, you, you increase as you go further through the game. And for us, when we're talking about multiplayer, we can't really do that because it means that you know, a player that's played the game for a long time will have a massive advantage over somebody that is just joining the game. And we want to try and avoid that. So we've tried to level the balance so that things are, are very equal. And uh, you know, people will get to see how well we've achieved that when, we, uh, when they try out the closed beta. But as well, I mean, really, we've, we've looked at all the mechanics across the board, all the cards. Pretty much every card has new abilities or changed abilities. So the game's been changed and rebalanced from the ground up. I mean, it's quite a crowded genre as well, kind of card games. I mean, you have a very unique one in Gwent, but do you feel like you can compete with the likes of Hearthstone and those other card games? Um, for us, we're not really uh, looking at it as like, uh, a competition like that. I mean, like you said, Gwent is really quite different. Our rule system in terms of having you know, best of three rather than just having you know, uh, uh, the one round that you kind of play. And also you have the three rows system. And something that we're looking to do with uh, you know, our redefinition of Gwent is to basically really build upon those three rows. So players that are familiar with the game, they'll know about the weather cards. But we're obviously planning a lot of other special cards, which will really take advantage of that as well. So you know, I think uh, there's enough room for, for really high quality products in any genre. The game's going to be free to play, um, so you mentioned in-game purchases that will be optional. What kind of stuff will you be able to buy? So the only thing that we can talk about right now is the card packs. So you'll be able to buy card packs in different uh, denominations, but something that we're really keen about is that um, when you buy a card pack, it comes in two stages. So the first stage is that you actually get a choice of three cards. And we're still deciding whether they'll be face up or face down, but you actually get to choose a card from uh, a selection that's presented to you, which, and it's guaranteed minimum rare. So, you know, in the way that our cards work, you have different rarity levels. So you're, you're guaranteed to always get something, you know, pretty useful on the first card. And then the other four cards that you pick from are actually random. So, you know, you could be super lucky and you could get five legendary cards, or you could, you know, you could be a bit unlucky, but you'll always still get that one card at the beginning that you could choose from, which is so, going to be something pretty cool. Can you tell us the reasons behind uh, why the Nilfgaard deck won't be available at launch? Was it just more complex than the other decks? Um, I think that uh, Nilfgaard and Northern Realms, for you know, pretty obvious reasons, they're quite similar. They're both armies, so we really want to define the personalities very differently of the different decks. So, you know, Skellige, they're, they're very different to Northern Realms. We have, you know, soldiers and so on and so forth. Monsters are obviously, again, super different. And Squirtel, based around elves, dwarves, again, they're, again, very, very different. So, you know, we want to take the time and really make two very polished and very different decks that are both full of, you know, human soldiers, siege weapons, etc. I found that in The Witcher 3, once I'd kind of collected all the cards of a deck, I could almost become unbeatable. What adjustments have you had to make to the AI and the game itself to ensure that doesn't happen in the story mode? Um, in the story mode, it's a bit different because obviously you're going to start with a deck that we control and, and we have a, a really huge amount of control about how your army evolves and how your army changes and obviously about the difficulty level and um, you know, the amount of cards and the types of cards the AI has. For multiplayer, it's more, uh, it was much more of a challenge. And one of the things that we've changed, for example, is that during Witcher 3, you could fill your deck with heroes, whereas in our version of Gwent, you're only allowed to take a maximum of four. So therefore, each player, you know, you can have a total of eight heroes in a game, but the chances of you drawing all four of those are not that high as well. So that's an example of one of the things. We have some other things that we're not ready to talk about just yet, but you know, changing the way heroes are 
in the decks is a little it's one of the first changes was the story mode itself quite a big undertaking because it doesn't seem like it's a quick thing that you chucked in it seems like it's a fully fleshed out you know proper witcher experience really uh, yeah and that's definitely what we wanted to be we wanted to feel like so um it is a big undertaking but you know we have some super talented artists and uh, our voice actors you know you've probably heard familiar voice of Geralt have great voice actors so for, for everybody working on it they're super passionate about it and uh you know we we think the single player can be something really cool and really unique and something that players you know come to expect from us and the, the kind of uh, depth and the uh, moral choices that you're used to from the Witcher universe, you know, we really want that to be a part of our game. So it makes sense to put it in Gwent as well. Oh, all right, final question then. Your favourite deck and why? Uh, actually, I really like monsters. Uh, just, you know, big, huge, hard hitters on the field. Like, you saw the Fiend in there. I mean, when we put the premium cards of the monsters down and they're animated, they look awesome. And, you know, they're, just, they're so different in terms of the art style. You know, soldiers, are they're interesting and we have different types of them. But, you know, when you play a Fiend and then you play a Griffin and then you play a Wyvern or something, it looks really different and they all have really different effects. So, for me, they're my favourite.